Um, that you may be seated. Roll call the members, please. Mr. Deeter, District 1. Here. Mr. Tipton, District 2. Here. Mr. Heron, District 3. Here. Mr. Brinke, District 4. Here. Mr. Mann, District 5. Here. Ms. Hood, District 6. Here. Here. Ms. Kruby at large. Here. All right, everyone here looks like, and that's, that's a good thing. The next item is to approve the agenda. We will amend it. So, Ms. Starnes, you tell us what the amendment would be to the agenda. We need to add a line item for the data center resolution. Okay. That'd be line item. What did you say? Um, we could do that as 9B. 9B. Do we have a motion to approve the agenda as amended? So moved. Mr. Deer made a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Mr. Tipton, second. Any discussion? All favor vote saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Next item is approved with the minutes from January the 3rd, 2021, then our adjourned meeting January 20th, 2021. So anyway, do we have a motion to approve both of those sets of minutes? I make the motion that we approve. Thank you. Ms. Hood made a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Right, Ms. Kruby second. Any discussion? All favor vote saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. The next item on the agenda is our system suppression period. And uh, let me read this little statement. The system suppression period is the point of the meeting. Anyone who wishes to address the board or staff may do so. If you wish to speak, please come to the podium and state your name, where you're from in the county, and on what organization you represent. The board may or may not respond to anything you say, but we will take everything you say into account when making future decisions. Please keep your comments uh, concise and business-like. If no one has signed up to speak, we have a particular order. We just ask that you take turns to speak your business. Any action will be considered after we close this expression. So we are in this expression. The first thing I want to do is Mr. Grady Gilmore. Come forward, please. I'll meet you halfway, how's that? That sounds Let me put my mask back on. I, I take it off when I'm talking so I can, everybody can hear me, but I'm just going to put this mask back on most of myself. <laughs> when we, get, we do an award like this, it's, a, it's an honor for me to, to get to do it. But to have someone that has as many years of dedicated service as you have, so we'll go to the middle here, that way everybody can, okay. can see. Uh, but it's a good thing that we can do this. And, uh, but anyway, it's presented to Mr. Grady A. Gillenwater, an appreciation for your 36 years. 36. It's a long time. <laughs> I'll service to the citizens of Scott County as an employee of the Scott County Department of Public Works, January the 20th, 1985 to January 31st. 2021. So with that, do you mind shaking hands? All right. I say that uh, sure. Miss Lisa wants to get a picture, so we'll do that. You might take it out. Okay. Yeah. All right. Hold it first straight, so it'd be pretty. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for your service. God bless. Now you got time to go fishing and hunting or whatever you want to do. I hope so. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, Mr. Roger Carter is here. So, Roger, if you want to come forward and then uh, tell us what you're up to. We already know, but we want to hear it from you. It's always good to be able to come when you ain't got problems, so <laughs> that's a good day. The day is that day, so uh, we just, on behalf of the, all three agencies and you know, the Rescue Squad Association, we just want to thank the board and the work that the CARES Act Committee put in, all the stuff they've done this past year, you know, with these uh, equipment that they put in the field out here to treat patients with, you know, uh, new ambulances, which sit out here, and uh, Lucas devices, which you can see them on the trucks, they're all out there too. Uh, uh, we've got the uh, oxygen generator now, we can do oxygen in the county again, uh, so we don't have to rely on 
somebody else taking care of that. Uh, you know, a lot of PPE, things like that. These guys have done a good job on that carry that committee. And, you know, we just want to give them thanks and, you know, we appreciate it very much. Dave or Wendell's got anything they want to say. Mine's pretty brief. All right. They're sitting out here if you guys look at on the all three of them is pretty much identical other than maybe the color scheme, paint scheme or something like that, but you know, they're top notch, they're advanced life support units. Uh, uh, all three, I guess, is now in service or close to it, so we're running calls, so uh, we do appreciate it. You'll see them out and about. We appreciate you. Yeah, I, I really appreciate all that you do for those people <coughs> in the background and just Oh yeah, a real asset. that's a good news for black guys. Yeah, it's yeah. wonderful. That's really good. They, they need it. They really need it. Well, the fire department is a big part of it too. We just think on Facebook, social media about it, but I didn't recognize the fire department in the National Guard. Did I should have? But anyway, thank y'all for doing what you've done. But those people are really, really appreciative. Yeah. We I mean, they do our best, do what we could up there. And, you know, it's, this time it's hard for us to get there, but we we try to keep them in water, keep them in their homes. Well, hopefully, we can get that thing started. <clears throat> Sooner than later, so they've uh, it's been approved and the funding has been approved for it. So they need it. I know they're that. appreciative of it. Yeah, they sure. All right, thank you, Mr. Wendell. Yes. Good morning, everybody. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Roger spoke on behalf of the rescue squads, the three social, the three incident association, and I'd like to speak on behalf of the fire department. Uh, we appreciate what you've done for us. You spent a lot of money on PPE for us and things for us in the county. We we, we really appreciate it. We thank you for that. We uh, really need to thank you all for you know the, what you do for our county. I mean, if we had to, a lot of people volunteer, and some are paid in a rescue squad or whatever, but uh, you are a great asset to this county. Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of counties around that didn't get what we've got here from you all. Yeah. And, uh, people need to know that. Well, we get that training center down there built, and that's all been you know working on getting it funded. So that's going to happen too. So that's going to be a, another big asset for the county. It's right on Route 23, so it's going to be easy to get to, and so it's going to be another. You know. Well, again, I thank you all on behalf of the association. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wanting to speak? Mr. David Gillum. I'll just say on behalf of the Scott and Lifesaver Group, just like Roger and Angela said. We thank you, but sometimes thank you just really ain't enough. And you can say thank you, but you know, you really, you know, I don't know what else to start. You just don't feel like it's enough time, but we do appreciate everything that the county has done for us because we couldn't have done it on our own. And I know without the carriers that money, you all couldn't have done it. So from Scott County, we appreciate it and we thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Well, what I will do, we'll come out of season expression period and we don't have anything to vote on or anything and we're going to take a maybe five or eight minute break and we're going to go outside those vehicles and we'll come right back and back in session. So with that, the meeting is temporary. thing to do and uh, anyway it's tax dollars well spent on something like that especially to help the people of our fine county. Next item is item seven it's the Coalfield Expressway resolution. Uh, if I know everybody knows about that that road that's supposed to tie into West Virginia come all the way into Pound on Route 23. Uh, it's been ongoing for several years. Uh, we have a resolution here before you uh, 
So it'll be dated around 121, and so I recommend that we do this resolution. It's a resolution of support for this Coalfield Expressway. Uh, I, West Virginia has most of their finished, and so for whatever reason, uh, the state of Virginia is sort of drug their feet a little bit, getting it funded. Uh, it's a lot of money. You don't get, it, get that thing done. And the only thing I wish they'd done there was come by the uh, College of Wise, University of Virginia College of Wise, it come that way if it's coming in the panel on 23. So anyway, this road is very important and if you read the resolution, what it stands for, what it is, hopefully it will be a, a help to get that, that thing done. So anyway, in discussion, if not, we'll need a, a vote here, a motion to approve this resolution. Mr. In discussion. I'll make, a, I'll make a motion to approve gotcha. this resolution. All right, Mr. Tipton has made a motion. Second. Uh, second. Mr. Briefly second. Is there any discussion? Does anybody, does anybody have any questions about it? Okay. All in favor of saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carried. Uh, next item is item eight, and it's a resolution of non support for the abandonment or discontinuance of those routes portions which is 664, 667, 669, 672, and 673. We discussed that about what would happen with that and uh, so if you've had a chance to look at that I hope you have uh, about what we're we're recommending to, to VDOT. Uh, it's a resolution of non-support or abandonment or discontinuance of those portions of those roads. I'm not going to read that whole thing into the record you see it in front of you in discussion if not we'll need a motion on this uh, Mr. Rule, resolution. Question. And Bill may know, I don't know. Do you have an idea where that, uh, the Route 64, or maybe Mike does, the, uh, the Route 64? 664. Yeah, 664. These are the same roads that you have looked at in the past a yeah, little bit. Yeah, um, and since then, he, you know, we voted to go ahead and let them do the public hearings. But VDOT reached out and said that he has since learned that we can do a non-support resolution and we don't take any action. We leave them just as they are. Yeah, yeah. my question is for that particular road. You know where that one's at? It, it, that's the one that's going to be abandoned. Correct. Is that the one you go by Manville School and then go yes. up to that valley, you go to the end of it, and then you go from there across to the Belma Tipton Road? Or, yeah, you go that, you, you go past uh, the old uh, Manville School to the top of the mountain to the ridge. Turn left and yeah. go out that road. Right. It ends the, the where it's paved the ends, and the abandonment what they want to abandon goes all the way uh, down to the. Uh, down to Spears Ferry, to that road that goes across down there. And there's not been a road through there in years. There's nothing in through there but woods. So it's on top of the ridge? It's on top of the ridge. Okay, that's right close to where I was raised up there. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. That's it. It's at the end of the mm -hmm. Belvin Tipton Road. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any yeah, other discussion? Up, yeah, up on the very top. Yes. Yeah. Stood going down. If you went to the right, went on out through there, is that what you're talking about? Yes. Yeah. Does this mean they won't do nothing to these roads now? Exactly. It'll be just as this fine. conversation never happened. Yeah. The last couple of times VDOT's been here to talk about these roads. Okay. The reason I was asking is because they have been doing something to that road up there that joins on Ponderosa. They have been putting gravel on it. So All right. that's what the lady said. You know where I'm talking about, Mr. Jeremy? Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, for a little ways down through there. Yeah. I I've thought about this a lot, and I've got some phone calls about it. But I, I think we need to leave them the same. I don't think we need. To. I mean, I, what's I, I can't see their reasoning behind it. I mean, they already know that they're not going to be working them. They know that they're not going to be doing it. Why? Why change it? You know, I, don't, I mean, just to make I guess their paperwork easier. Maybe I don't know. I think this is a much better solution than anything we've yeah. seen before. This is yeah. good. So this this will put a stop to it, Fred. I mean, they won't. It stays they, as is. They won't. They won't have a public hearing about it or anything. Okay. No. Okay. Right. Any other discussion? No. Not a motion on this resolution of non-support. I'll make a motion. Mr. Heron has made a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Mr. Tip, a second. Any other discussion? All in favor of saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Uh, I'm going to say this now, but I don't forget it. Uh, I'm in a Wisco meeting the other night, 
they were talking about a road that goes from the high chaparral to the high knob, and it's a forest service road. And where the houses are, to pass the houses, they gate it and it's closed in the wintertime. And it's a big issue for the people, especially on the Wise County side, the Norton side, they can't get up that steep part of the mountain from Norton, so they go through Tacoma, go up that way, and uh, go through Sexton Town and go up, you know, to the high knob that way. Well, they, they close that road off. The Forest Service does. And so they were talking about, and I don't, they'll, they'll probably send us something about it, uh, some kind of resolution or something to try to get VDOT to take that road over. Now the Forest Service said they would give it up. That's what, the, that's what they said in that meeting, that they would give it up. But getting VDOT to take it into their system is a whole different thing because they're not taking anything into their system. So anyway, if the counties get together on this, and that's what we'll probably do, we'll probably see something down the road that will uh, that will try to encourage VDOT to take that into the state system and then maintain it. Uh, the road's a good road. I mean, I've, I've rode it, I've bicycled it, I've, you know, but they close in the wintertime. They got to gauge it off where you cannot get through there. So anyway, that's something that'll happen somewhere down the road when Lena Wisco gets their, you know, gets their ducks in a row on it, then they'll probably be hitting the counties up to, to do something with that, try to get VDOT to take that. Once that happens, then they, that road will not be closed. All those Forest Service roads, they close in the wintertime because of the, uh, it's just hard to maintain. They get in bad shape, they freeze and thaw and all that stuff and try to keep the traffic off of it during those freeze thaw period. Well, here's that probably in a, in a few months about getting Forest Service to give it up and VDOT to take it. So we'll see how that, how that goes later on. Did I get that correct? He was in the, the Yeah, that's, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. You and Marshall both were there, so I believe that was about what we said. Well, the next item is item number nine, the regional jail resolution. Uh, we talked about a little bit about what we and what we need to do with this, and this resolution uh, and talking to Ms. Starnes about what this will do. Act is going to the general assembly will be spending more, okay, there, and so I was kind of leery of it, trying to read this in, you know, exactly what this means on this uh, resolution. So anyway, Ms. Starnes, do you want to address anything else about it or anything before we uh, do anything with this? Uh, the resolution just says that uh, the Board of Supervisors is going to be in support of the House budget and Senate budget amendments. Um, it will provide $10.6 million for the second year from the general fund, and that is the Commonwealth's general fund to increase the per diem payments. Uh, right now, they pay around $12, and the increase would be 18.75%, which uh, would be about 225 more per inmate per day that are state responsible. And it also um, says that you're in support of the bills that would provide 90.9 .9 million from the general fund, again, <coughs> Commonwealth's general fund, to increase the starting pay and implement uh, a progression program for deputy sheriffs and regional jail officers, which are both paid from the compensation board, not the county. You have a, in your packet uh, a little piece of paper there with the inmate count, and we're up to 50 DOC inmates that should be in state penitentiary, and we're having to pay that. We do get $12 per uh, inmate, and our part would be about like, $24 or something, I guess, what it's cost per inmate there about. Uh, so you do the math, it's pretty expensive keeping those there. Uh, the reason they're not taking them, and I think, did you say they did move some out? They moved a few County? last week, but I'm not sure. At the time of the meeting, they didn't know whether they, which locale they were, they were from. Yeah, okay. Didn't they say the other day, Frida, that uh, they were going to start vaccinating and maybe the, they could start moving more, give them the COVID vaccine? Yeah, the they'll do their vaccine and then quarantine them when they're pod when they move them and then once the 14 days pass they'll be released into general population. I know some might disagree with them being vaccinated before some of us people that uh, are but it's going to save a lot of money getting them out of there and getting them where they need to be. It'd be their responsibility seven hours. We're spending a lot of money. We, we had a, a little discussion here back a few years ago. We had 29 inmates or state inmates should be in the Department of Corrections. And so we, we, we've seen that and we got them to move most of them. And so anyway, I don't know why the DOC have to give, force their hand to get them to take the inmates that they're responsible for. If they would, if they would reimburse the full amount of housing those inmates would be one thing. We could house them, but then pay the department they want. 
And so we've written letters to the governor, to our state delegation, trying to get their attention to move these inmates out. We came out of this It's going to be a budget buster again for us this year because at the end of the year when we budgeted the amount we did for the number of inmates, that number's going to go up because they're not taking them to the state penitentiary. But anyway. <laughs> Anyway, this resolution, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good idea. I think we should do it. Uh, any other discussion? We'll vote. I'm not going to a motion to uh, approve this resolution, resolution as presented to you. Do we have a motion? I'll make, I'll make the motion. Okay. Mr. Kruby made a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Mr. Jeter, second. Any <coughs> discussion? All in favor of saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. We added uh, item 9B, so Ms. Starnes, if you would. I believe it's in your packet. Let me double check. It is. It's on the RIFA letterhead. Looks like this. And it's an MOU uh, that the Lonesome Pine Regional Industrial Facilities Authority would like for you to consider. They have been doing studies um, on the potential benefit and feasibility of having data centers located in Southwest Virginia. And this MOU is between Lee, Scott, Wise, Dickinson, and the City of Norton in agreement that we would charge a data center personal property tax rate of 24 cents per hundred dollars of assessed value. And that is from legislation that was passed in 2020 that is specific for data centers only. This is not call centers or uh, businesses that has computer equipment. It's for data centers specifically only. Data storage centers. Yes. Okay. And the depreciation schedule has uh, been agreed upon by the commissioners of revenue in those same localities and it's listed there on the MOU. And the benefit of this would be to try to uh, lure or to court data centers to try to get them to locate in Southwest Virginia. Project OASIS uh, was a study that was done on specific sites in Southwest Virginia and one of those is located in Scott County that would be an ideal fit for a data storage center. So this MOU is going to be presented at all the uh, Board of Supervisors meetings coming up within the month of February and you all are first since your meeting was the third. Uh, so you're looking at it first at an official Board of Supervisors member meeting. But all the localities, um, Commissioners of Revenue, EDA and County Administrators have been involved with this MOU. And this is what was finally decided upon and agreed to. Those people. And we would probably vote on this in July, is that correct, to implement the... You would pass the MOU today, and then when we set our tax rate in May, you would actually officially, yeah. it'll be a new line item, or a new right. tax line item for the 24 cent rate that's approved at that time. So this is the resolution of support that we agree with it, so then when the time comes, we'll set the tax rate for that. I think it's a good idea. If it'll pull you know, businesses in, with the amount of equipment that they have, it'll be a, a good shot in the arm as far as uh, make, make, make your job a little harder, Debbie, to do all this. But uh, anyway, it's going to be a good shot in the arm for uh, our revenue. And Ms. Daughtry, do you have anything that you want to yeah, add? I'm right here. <laughs> <laughs> you moved on. No, I just, uh, I feel like it is a good thing if we can attract those businesses in um, you know that would be extra revenue so I'm all for it yeah. I think uh, it's a good idea too but if we can do that uh, through a tax incentive like that to attract that and we do have an excellent site here in the county to locate a data storage center so uh, hopefully it will be used it's been a lot of work has gone on there so anyway it's, it's going to be a great place to have that so hopefully it will happen I think it's a good idea. I do too. Any questions or comments for? I office? think anything we can pull from Northern or Eastern Virginia, do it. it's good. We put minerals sitting out there. It's a natural place to put something in. Yep. Yeah. We. Yes. This is. I think this is great. Good job. 
Very All right, any other questions for Ms. Dock? Thank you for coming. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, on this, uh, mem this MOU Memorandum of Understanding, uh, I think it's a good idea. You've looked at it. Uh, we want to make sure we get the start to do it, but again, we set the tax rate later on this year. That's when it will officially go into effect. The other counties will see where we are on this, that we have this. If you look on the back of it, there's a place for all the signatures, all the people that's involved, and uh, so anyway, that's, uh, that will hopefully happen. So with that, I will entertain a motion to uh, approve this MOU. I'll make a motion. All right. <laughs> I'll second. All right, Ms. Hood made a motion, and Mr. Bricky uh, second. Any discussion? Not all in favor, but saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carried. So I think it'll be good, and we will do with that at the appropriate time. Uh, item number 10. Yeah. Uh, and Ms. Darndall, again, I'll call on you to talk about this. I've got your front ups, I've read it, but if you want to just briefly uh, tell us what this is and so everybody can hear it. I've included notes um, about the Families First Coronavirus Response Act on your tablet, and it just explains what that is and the benefits that the federal government uh, required localities to do for their employees. It did expire on December 31st. <clears throat> However, there's a Consolidated Appropriations Act that was adopted on December 27, 2020, and it gives you the opportunity to extend the leave benefits, but it's no longer required, so it'd be voluntary. And uh, since the coronavirus and the pandemic has started, uh, county employees have been paid for their quarantine time, or if they've been COVID positive, they've been paid for their time off without having to use their sick time. So at this point, I just wanted to get guidance from the board, whether that's something that you want to continue allowing the employees to do until March 31st. And one option to consider would be if, um, since the county employees have been offered the option of the COVID vaccine, <coughs> if they have declined that, then they would be required to use their sick time if they have been quarantined. We can leave it where everybody's paid, or this could be um, possibly an option for those that have chose not to do the vaccine, that they would be required to use their sick time. I think that's fair enough. I mean, if you take the vaccine, and uh, this applies. If you don't, then we heard her explain that. So anyway, uh, anything else, Ms. Sarms? That's all I have on it. I just wanted some guidance to see if you were in agreement to go ahead and continue paying the sick leave through March 31st. And of oh. course, if it's a compensation board employee, you know, they're paid anyway. Right. They, they're just not using their sick leave. I think it's a good idea. It's two more months of it, which uh, is not, not bad. It'll help our employees if they get sick, if they're exposed, whatever. But anyway, any discussion, not we entertain a motion to approve this. I, think, I do think it's a good idea. If we approve it, the option would be added. That's up to you. We can either leave it or not. I mean, if you want to just not require the vaccine, I mean, we can't require the vaccine, but you know what I mean. I, I think the option needs to be added and then make a motion on that. Okay. Any other discussion? All right. Well, so <laughs> I, I think we need to leave it exactly the same until March and then decide. Because I, I just, there's, there's people out there that's had the virus that their doctors are saying that they can't, they're, they're, they're telling them not to take the shot at a certain amount of time. So maybe we should wait at least until March and maybe look at it again. Okay. That's my opinion. Your thoughts, Mr. Brick, is that? Yeah, that, that's fine. Okay. All right, any, any other discussion? All right, if not, we will, I'll entertain a motion to approve this, uh, as Mr. Heron has explained what his thoughts were, so I think it's good. Okay. And we we can look at it again in March and see. We'll that'll give on us, the April agenda, and we'll okay. see. That'll, you know, that'll give us time to yeah. the, you know see how the vaccine's doing. And, and we never know what will come from the federal government right. between now and then. Right. So it yeah. changes daily. We'll look at it again in April. All right, that'll be good. I right, need a motion on this. So moved. 
you make a motion, Mr. Yeah, okay. Get the muzzle on getting here. <laughs> All right, uh, Mr. Jeter has made a, a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Mr. Heron, second. Any discussion? All favor vote saying aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Let me say one thing. I have a niece who lives in Burma. She's married to my nephew. And she had the virus in April and she has it again. She tested positive. She's really sick with it. Sicker now than she was the first time. So you can get it again. She has, and she was pretty sick the first time. She's really sick this time. And so keep that in thought. You may have not had it. And they told me when I left the hospital, I was immune, probably maybe forever, but at least four months. So I will take the shot when it's available. I promise you I'm going to take it. So uh, I encourage you to do the same. All right. Next item, uh, bookkeeping, item 11. Ms. Amy is here, so if you would, ma'am. Uh, please appropriate $85,813.16 to Sheriff's Vehicle Replacement 31200-8001 for a reimbursement received and deposit at the Treasurer's Office and appropriate $2,430.98 to EDA's Legal Counsel Fees 81600-3190 for a refund received and deposit at the Treasurer's Office and that's all the appropriations. I did motion to make the appropriation as you drop in the Mr. Chairman. All right. Mr. Tipton made a motion. Do we have a second? I second. Mr. Good second. Any discussion? All favor vote saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Please accept AFA 2020 fall project lifesaver grant for Sheriff's Office. If accepted, please establish budget code for transmitters 31354-8203 and please appropriate $3,000 for one half of the grant award received deposit at the treasurer's office. Do we have a motion on making this grant request? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Creeley made a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Mr. Tiffin, second. Any discussion? All favor vote saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Next item, Ms. Tina is here to the appointment, so if you would, you got a lot to go over, so. You have a packet of applications in your folder. The first one is for the CPMT board. You do not have any applicants for this. So we didn't do anything different with that. I, mean, I don't know if it's... Jeremy, you said they meet in the middle of the day. And it's, the working people is kind of hard to do. And, well, the parents. For the parents, yeah. It's hard to do. And it, uh, uh, you know, since you know, I've been on it uh, a year, and there's never been a parent there. They're just, they're not able to, or they you know, it's hard to find somebody. Uh, you know, I've even thought if they was <laughs> somebody close, you know, if, if they'd be interested. Uh, <coughs> and I don't, I don't know if the rest of the uh, team would want to change the time or not. You know, that's another thing you run into because they, they work too. Uh, all of us leaving their job. You know, to come. of course, you know. Uh, they didn't change it. But anyway, we'll keep it out there. Maybe yeah, if, if anybody has any, uh, they have to. You know, school, school aged children. You know, you don't have to be. Of course. It's if you don't fully understand what they do, it's 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 about the foster parents and the foster kids. Well, it's about the foster kids in the county. Uh, that's not necessarily means that these kids are in Scott County. They could be anywhere, you know, uh, like uh, instance maybe with or Roanoke or something like that, wherever the foster family is. But it's still the county's responsibility to uh, take care of that child. You know, they. Uh, we provide uh, uh, anything from education to health care, glasses, whatever that child might need, you know, it, that it comes to this team. So, and you know, the reason you don't hear much about it is because we're not allowed to talk about it. <laughs> you know, we spend 45 minutes and there's nothing in that 45 minutes that we can share except for what I just did, you know. So, you know, it's, it's very, very important if anybody that has a child in here in Scott County that would be willing to serve. You know, uh, we made it 1:30 uh, on the. It, it's the Tuesdays after our board meeting, so 
whatever that falls on. Okay. All right, keep yours up. You know, some of them I will serve, and that's very important. All right, Ms. Tina. The next one is for the Crooked Road Board. John Kilgore has been serving and he reapplied. Okay. Do we have any nominations for the Crooked Road Board for director? I'll nominate Mr. John Kilgore. <coughs> any other nominations? I'll make a motion to nominate the season for my acclamation. Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Mr. Jeter, second. Any discussion? All favor, vote saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. We have two positions on the housing authority appeal. Bill Owens reapplied. Randy Compton did not. And you don't have any other applicants. Right, do we have any nomination for the housing authority? It's a four-year term. Nominate Phil Owens. Okay. Any other nomination? I'll make a motion. Nomination cease and move by acclamation. All right. Mr. Tipton made a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Do second? All in favor of saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Now, on the second one, do we have any nomination for the second uh, position? I'll nominate Randy. He didn't apply, but I'll nominate him. Okay. I'm pretty sure he'll do it. All right. He's been on it for ever. Yeah. What's his last name again? Okay. Any other nominations? I'll stop by and tell him I put him in. You thought he was that early? Yeah. I see you appreciate that. Any other nominations? <clears throat> no, you need a motion to nominate and cease and vote by acclamation. Senator Mr. Chairman. If we made a motion, do we have a second? I'll second. Mr. Kruby, second. Any discussion? All in favor, vote saying aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? Motion carried. All right. Charles Bullock has been serving on the planning commission and he reapplied. Have any nomination for the planning commission? I'll nominate Mr. Charles Bullock. Okay. Any other nominations? Not need a motion nomination to cease and vote by information. So moved. Mr. Jeter made a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Mr. Bricky, second. Any discussion? All favor of saying aye. 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 Motion carried. We have three positions on the Recreation Advisory Board. <coughs> For the first one, Ray Leonard has been serving. He did not reapply, but he is interested in serving. He did not send in an application, but there. Right. You said right Leonard? Yes. Okay. All right, do we have any nominations from District, district 2? Somebody nominate Ray Leonard. I'll nominate Mr. Ray Leonard. All right, Mr. Heron made a motion. Do we have any other, any other nominations? I'll make a motion of nomination cease and vote by acclamation. We have a motion on that, Mr. Tifton, and do we have a second? I second. Mr. Hood, second. All favor of saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. All right, the district four. Barry Wool has been serving. Uh, he did not submit an application, but he is interested in serving. Do we have any nominations for the district four? I'll nominate Mr. Barry Wolf for the District Four. All right. Mr. Kruby, nominate Mr. Wolf. Any other nominations? <clears throat> made a motion to nominate the season, vote by acclamation. So moved. Mr. Jeter, Jeter made a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Mr. Kruby, second. All in favor, vote saying aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. And then uh, another one. Uh, the at large position, Dexter Marvin, has been serving. He did reapply, and you have one other applicant, Emily Williams. All right. Do we have any nominations for this at large position? 
I'll nominate Mr. Parman. Okay, any other nominations? Not need a motion, nomination to cease, both back motion. I'll second motion. All right. Mr. Chairman made a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Ms. Uh, Ms. Kruby second. All three of them say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. All right, next item is our county attorney, uh, Ms. Gaber. I don't have anything today. You all have my report. If you have any questions, you're happy to try. Anybody have any questions or comments for this case? Last week, I think we gave everybody a scare. We were in the closed session and we asked our county attorney and Ms. Starr step out. It was good. It was not nothing bad. So I want to make clear that up for that. <laughs> I even tried to get them to stay in and hide because I said it's going to make them think we're trying to fire our county attorney and uh, our county administrator. But that was not the case. It was good news. We needed to discuss without them being present. So it was not. It was nothing bad. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyway, do thank you for your service. Thank you. But anytime you do that, I mean, I'll, I'll be the same way. I would be, you know, what's, what the heck is going on here, you know, to do that. And I told her I would never, ever, ever ask her to leave closed session unless it's about her. So that was the case. And uh, so anyway, it was, it was a good, good thing. It wasn't a bad thing. All right. Ms. Starnes, item 12. Item 12 of the claims. <laughs> and your green sheet in your packet, bright green, can't miss it. The general fund balance after claims nine million one hundred eighty-one thousand three hundred twenty-four dollars and thirty-seven cents. As you can see, that's um, above where we were at this time last year, based on the chart. Early claims. Total $253,036.43. Um, we had two large ones that made up that total. Uh, BB&T, Governmental Finance, that was the first payment on the new Sheriff's Vehicles, $120,576.91. And Dominion of Bedford, uh, $71,045. That was payment for two vehicles that will be reimbursed for with the loan proceeds. Uh, current claims, uh, some of the larger ones, uh, advanced disposal, 33,330, 70, <coughs> down a little bit compared to the other months. Um, Foster Tuck, Fostick Tucker, that's for our audit, $37,500. Lonesome Pine Regional Library, 50,762.50, that's their third quarter contribution. Southwest Virginia Regional Jail Authority, third quarter payment $552,513.31. So total claims that you need to approve today is $1,046,015.20. Any regional jail, uh, are we going to come out pretty good on that or are we going to end up on where it's going? At the point right now, we're going to owe $500,000 for this year. Can you imagine what it'd be if we didn't have a Scott service program in place? So, anyway, everything we're saving with that, we're giving it right back. Uh, you know, the state inmates should be in the state penitentiary, we're paying it right back. So, anyway, it's like we should get shot in the foot, we're not doing it ourselves, but anyway, it's just, uh, we see a way to save money, it's like the state sees a way to take it away. Are they about to open up and start having trials so Scott services can get more in the Their service? opening plan was denied by the state, so they're having to redo some things with the plan that they submitted, so I'm not sure what the timeline is. And I did ask that question about it is making our numbers go up when the folks were here as running the program, they said it was as part of it because we're not having trials. So anyway, that's part of it. <clears throat> Did we not send a letter forward to the Terry or Senator? We did. And the governor anything back? They were doing a 
combined later to the governor. So that could be where the bills are coming through for the money, the additional money on the per diem. Their, our legislators aren't the ones that sponsored those, but they could have had some influence. I don't know that that's the case. But. One thing I've noticed our money in the bank that we've got is right at $9 million compared to the other years. Is that because of the COVID money that we have? The COVID money is not included in that. It's not included in that. Okay. So we're, we're better than we've been in a long time at this time of the year. So uh, anyway, I'm, I'm glad to see that. So. All right. Need a motion to pay the bills? I'll make the motion. Mr. Chairman. made a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Approve a second. Any discussion? All favor of saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. But our general fund balance is better it's been in a while, so thank you folks that are making all the differences. Our Miss Lane is. Uh, I just want to thank, uh, I want to make a note that the courthouse lettering is being installed today. So if you get a chance to go by and check that out. And that's all I have. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Kilgore is here uh, with the EDA, and uh, our presentation by him will be next. And then Mr. France is here too. He'll be done in a few minutes. So, Mr. John, I'm sure. Do you want him to go first? Yeah, there you go. All right, we'll let him. Thank you, John. How's everybody doing? Good, how are you doing? Going quick today. Oh, that's good. Right. Um, I'll wait for those get passed out when I'm around for a Don't be frightened by the scary picture on the, on the screen. I've got good news. <laughs> okay. I was going to say. No, I've got, to... that happened, but I've got, I did fixed. So. I've heard about that. Yeah. Uh, Somebody did it, Greg. It, well, it looks like one, yeah. Um, yeah or we thought it may be a uh, putting ring. It's the cleanest vandalism I've ever seen. It's still vandalism, <laughs> but it's, uh, they might have a feature in side cutting. But, uh, we'll start off with Keith Memorial Park. I know we've mentioned Scott's program. Again, I ought to give the tip of half of them. Uh, I think they're supposed to finish up the spring up there. They're getting pretty close. Uh, I've been up there. It looks great. Um, between the bridge, the fence, the uh, the cabin. If you've not been up there, you know when it gets warmer weather, I, I advise you to go. It, it looks great. They've done some great work. So uh, I think we're kind of seeing the light in the tunnel there. Um, Matt was here earlier. I'm talking with Matt. Um, I don't know if you're aware there was a small theft at Keith Memorial Park uh, in their storage shed. Um, I want to go there with Matt and take a look, see the, the feasibility of putting some cameras up there. It's a good idea if, it, if it's financially in, in the realm of what we could do. Uh, so work with them on that. Duffield Park, don't have a lot to add to that. I think last time I mentioned we've done a fence repair there. You know, the softball fields, uh, softball teams that are used that heavily, so got that fixed for them. So that's all I have uh, about Duffield. Um, as far as the boat sites, you know, I think I mentioned this last time with COVID restrictions. They took off again. Um, I'll always say that's probably some of the best dollars ever spent for the use of Scott. Uh, it was a very, very small investment overall, and uh, those have been used way more than we ever could imagine when we first did those. I mean, that happened 12, 12 years ago, probably. and. Uh, that's just really took off and every year I think that's going it, there's more and more people on those rivers and kayaks and floating and uh, that's probably one, been one of the best things we've done I think, in my opinion. Um, unfortunately you know the volleyball season we weren't able to have basketball. I'm talking with Scott County Schools. Um, our normal time frame would be February March right now we'd be starting bas basketball practice. Um, obviously, with VHSL season changes, with some COVID regulations, that time frame is just not workable for either one of us, for me or for the school system. But, um, you know, I, I always want to explore every option. We may do some type of late season youth league that we can, uh, like a shorten at the end of the, end of the spring, maybe early summer. Um, that's a problem. Yeah, I don't want to promise you anything, but that depends on the climate of everything and how it's going. I do want to shout out, though, to Scott County Schools. Um, they have been 
great partners. We couldn't do what we do without them. I'm kind of at their mercy with facilities, and there's some local churches too that work with me. You know, I have none of my own facilities as far as gyms and practice. You know, so practices and games, we rely 100% on the school system. So they are great to work with. Uh, every principal, every school board member, uh, the guys at the, the school board office. Uh, I really just want to thank them for what they do. They help make our uh, all of our stuff a success. So. Hopefully we get something there. If not, I'm fully confident this summer, outdoors, tennis and golf, we can get back, hopefully in the swing of things there at least. So we'll get back to some normalcy with our youth programs. Uh, going down here to the golf course, uh, you don't have it on here, but I meant to mean, I want to mention, I want to thank Bill Public Works. We had a leak in the chimney and we uh, were able to get that repaired at a pretty efficient cost. Uh, uh, they're on that roof, so we'll be able to get on that. I think public works for that. Um, getting here, the revenue, I think last time I was here, I said 73%. Still an incredible, in my opinion, 67% increase over last year. Uh, really, that 6% difference pretty much follows on that first quarter being so, so good. That July, August, September may have been the best July, August, September since I've been here, so. The, the, it dropping six percent doesn't worry me. It's winter time. That was kind of expected, and it will probably level off somewhat. But that sixty-seven percent does show that we still got a lot of momentum. We're in a good place going towards the spring. Um, the biggest thing, you know, I talked about what daily play up, memberships up, but probably in the last, the warm weather there, in October, November, playing more new players, new people we've never seen, which is great. That's awesome. That's great. Like usually you get them back. Uh, my staff, myself. Mention all the time, you know, they're new, they're new, that's a new person that they come up, we've never been here. So a lot of new players, which is, which is great. Um, now, for the elephant the road. <laughs> About 10 days ago, we went out, number, that's on number four green, which is a two-tiered green. That's at the top, and that's what you call it, a cleanup lap, which that's the best place that could have happened. That's about a 30 inch by 20 inch, about an inch and a half deep. I call it a doormat chunk of uh, saw it taken out of one of our greens. Um, that's, like I said, that's the cleanest form of vandalism I've ever seen and that was done. I mean, the edges are straight. That bottom sand, you can see that is level as can be. Uh, that stuff's heavy. I don't know if you've ever dealt with it. That's, that's a heavy piece of dirt. It looks like they cut out the sections. But anyways, we found that about 10 days ago. Um, kind of panicked, obviously. Uh, had some different options on the table, but I was able to get a hold of a, uh, well, first of all, we talked about the Sheriff's Department. I talked to the Sheriff's Department and Michael Delano, and they've been great. They've really got the word out on this, um, you know, to deter any kind of future vandalism like this. I think people don't realize, you know, that's taxpayer funded, that's government money. That can be a felony, you know, and I think that's out there now, and people realize that, you know, that, that's major damage, but, uh, Luckily, I found a sod farm down in Morganton, North Carolina, that are called Pro Green. Talked to a guy named Barry down there. I think he was kind of perplexed, too. I sent him pictures of what we had. Uh, you know, he said, man, I feel sorry for you. He's like, I'll cut you a piece for free. So, he didn't pay anything for that. And then also, our uh, chemical sales rep for Simplot. We ordered most of our chemicals from them, Jay Watson. I was telling him about it, showing him pictures, kind of, you know, picking his brain on what we should do. And he just had to say, hey, I'm in Charlotte that morning. He said, I'll swing by and pick it up for you. So he brought it to us Monday. I got that put in Monday during the snow and that's the repair job. Uh, probably looks pretty good to you. I can, you know, I'll always know that's there <laughs> when I see it. <laughs> Luckily, like I said, it's in a cleanup lap that shouldn't affect play. Um, it happened in the best place it could have happened. But the weird thing is just talking to different courses and through the grapevine. Um, Meadowview, Cat tells of Meadowview three weeks ago, same thing happened to them. Uh, wasn't quite as big as ours, but he said uh, the it was you know clean edges level. They took a square out of them too. So I've caught other courses in the area. Tell them to be able to look out. They've not had the damages we have, but cattails and us both got hit by the the sod thief. I don't know what you want to call them. Why would they want that? I mean, just a piece like you know that's not it. just a we we we've racked our brain over this. Um, if somebody just took it home to try like start All right. a grain or start, that, they're not going to be able to make time. I mean, they can't. The height you gotta know that at, or the low, the lowness of the height you gotta be at, plus the chemicals and stuff. I mean, that's not gonna live yeah. two months in somebody's house. Um, we we just really don't know. Um, people sit like somebody cut it maybe out as like a 
healthy math to the dog to use the bathroom on. That was a good thing. That's crazy. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah. I just don't know. But like I said, it is vandalism. But that just wasn't like a random child or teen, you know, got there and, you know, that that was still, still got everybody puzzled on that. But how far, gonna, how far do they have to walk? To? Well, see, that's the thing. Um, when we shut the gate, the closest accessible greens are going to be green number three and green number seven. So you would think if somebody's wanting to just do something easy, they would go to green three, which is as you go up the hill, there's one on the left, one on the right. That's the two greens near the road. That is near um, the Mockinson Hill subdivision. So as far as accessibility, you do have some, you know, if you drove and parked, you know, coming through there, you can get there kind of close. So. Um, but when I talked to Medity, it happened at number 14 for them, I think, and it, it's not, it's in a kind of a right in the back in the middle of the course type. I don't know, and, and like I said, there was there was no sand and dirt around it. They had done it. I mean, it was clean. I mean, it was. <laughs> yeah, it looked like they know what they did. They did. They did. I mean, I mean, there was no like no what no resident. I mean, you can barely see a little bit of sand on the right side of the green. But uh, but anyways, uh, we were lucky. We came out as lucky as we could on that with that fix because that would have been. We would have had done a lot of labor. We could have got that fixed, but it would have took a lot of time. We would have had to, there's a lot of labor involved if we could have fixed that. So we, get, we kind of came out good on that. But yeah. I'll, I'll end here with uh, the last thing I've got. All the seasons got switched around, so we're going to try to host some golf with the high school in March. That's a different time for us, but we always like having them there, trying to work with them as well as, you know, to have as many golf tournaments as we can for the, for the local schools. And I also work with Sean Becker again with Gate City High School to host another cross country meet. That's been a really neat thing we've kind of got going. Uh, people seem to enjoy that. Uh, you know, gets people up there that haven't been up there and using the course and using the park. So that's about all I have today. Kind of a slow time besides the <laughs> besides the damages, but that, that's all I've got for today. Thank you very much. Any questions for Mr. Prince? Thank you. Good presentation. All right, thank you. All right, Mr. John Kilgore, you be a great. Good morning. Y'all moved quickly this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Appreciate the opportunity to uh, present the economic development. It'll come up here in a minute. <clears throat> of course, uh, a couple of months ago, uh, the EL Technologies uh, made their announcement for uh, that for that field and. And on December 10th, which is a $375,000 investment, uh, 160 new jobs, their experience for the region in Scott County has been uh, great. They've had over 200 applications that they have uh, been through and uh, they've already started hiring, already actually started training. They've had uh, a couple of training classes. They've got another one set up for the 22nd. They will uh, uh, transition from the training and uh, since we're still dealing with COVID, they'll work from home for a while and then move back in a facility later. But uh, that's kind of a process, what they'll have to work through here until we get through this, get everybody with the vaccine and things like that, and they'll move in a facility. I also uh, continue to work with the Riverside Development, which is, of course, in the Weber City area. We've had, we have some approved funding for a new site there, and uh, we have to do a grant extension with VCETA. I mean, we, we did a grant extension with Virginia Tobacco Commission. We've got a loan extension with VCETA at their next meeting, and uh, that's how much funding we have at, at present. We're working with an engineer to try to get uh, you know a better estimate on what uh, we need for another site and hope that we can get that and then we can move on and get a site developed there uh, below where the T-Tech building is located now. And we're working with Lena Wisco on that. Hopefully uh, there's some other funding options out there once we get that uh, great estimate from the engineer. <coughs> 
and it is an opportunity zone designation uh, that site and our only opportunity zone and of course that's a picture of it and it goes all the way up to the the roberts and then covers all that area there as well so with the opportunity zone uh, the rifa the regional industrial facilities authority and let us go we partner with them and uh, we got a cdbg grant of thirty thousand dollars to assist with development of a regional opportunity zone prospectus so that will help us market that opportunity zone and it'll also help each county that participates to market their opportunity zone so we have uh, worked with little west go hired a consultant thomas p miller and associates and uh, they work with a couple others in virginia on opportunity zones and they will be a good one for us to They'll come and view our opportunity zones in the whole region and they'll give us ideas on how we can market that better. And uh, of course, Dana Boone Weather's Trail and Turf Center, uh, we continue to work with them and to transfer this over to DCR. That transfer is not taking place yet. It takes a long time to go through the state process, but we have sent the documentation and we're waiting on them now and we also continue to work with Virginia Tourism on the marketing of that center. Of course they've been had limited hours as well but hopefully after all this and maybe this summer they'll start opening regular hours and everybody will get back, back to normal we hope. And then Stony Creek parking lot we continue to work with DMME on this one and that's the Appalachian Conservation Corps, so they will improve the trail uh, going to the Devil's Bathtub. And the, uh, they'll come in and they'll uh, do, have a lot of volunteers, Appalachian uh, Conservation Corps. They'll get volunteers from the county, from schools or whatever. So hopefully we will get that uh, on target to get that done sometime this year. It's been a process to work through the DMME uh, funding process. It's, uh, it's challenging a little bit, but uh, we've been through it and hopefully uh, we're better for it at the end. It's uh, similar to the VDOT process. If you've ever been through a VDOT funding process, so it's similar to that. I know Danny's smiling. He knows the DMME process. The, uh, uh, one of the great programs, of course, is our RBA Rural Business Enterprise. It was a grant to the EDA so we could do a revolving loan program out to our small businesses. And we've had 29 loans approved to date, uh, of which that's 543,000 of loans that have went out. So we've been able to turn the money over and revolve the money over almost three times. We've only, we only have about 200,000 in that. We've got two uh, funding uh, fundings approved from rural development. One was a little over 100,000, then we had another one about 100,000. So it has almost turned over three times. So <coughs> that is great and we continue. We just approved, uh, or the board just approved two new loans in 2021. So the small business continue to uh, to grow in the county and I think that's good that we have those small businesses growing and uh, that's all over the county you know we've Nicholsville, Dungannon, we've had them all over the county. The, we also have been able to help those small businesses with uh, the BC to capital, uh, C capital grant program. They will go work with the Small Business Development Center and they'll get the business plan then those, those options are available for them the loan and the seed capital so we've had a couple get the ten thousand uh, 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 amount from bc then, and we've had uh, in the last year and then eight total have received these grants from bc then. bridging the gap uh, covid 19 loans uh well, this was the first one we started last year when this pandemic hit and realize that small business would be suffering and they continue to suffer some so we've been able to help not only with the, the county's been able to help appreciate what y'all have done but also the region's been able to help what Lena wisco's done and then what bc has done as well as through the, the eda so this was the first uh, amount of money that was approved from bc to through the eda and that was 55,000. Uh, those were loans at the time 
we have uh, worked with VCETA to get those converted to grants. So that's that will be helpful for our small businesses. Yeah. Then we have worked on the disaster recovery fund grant with your all's help. And we had uh, 28 inquiries and 18 of these were approved. This was the first round. Uh, 168,500 was distributed to the uh, for grants. Then round two, another 90,000 was dispersed, making a total of 258,000 for a small business, over 258,000. They're very appreciative of that. If you get out in the community and see some of those businesses, very appreciative of what the, the county has done to help them stay in business, to help them to continue to operate in the county. And you can see that that's all over the county that uh, business help you know have a higher concentration business in the Dixie City, Weber City area, but it's uh, impacted all over the county. Then Wisco Regional Small Business Recovery Assistance Program. That's of course City of Norton is managing that process, but uh, that's Lee Scott Wise and the City of Norton. These are one-time grants up to fifteen thousand, and uh, we. Recently, at $1.3 million has been approved, 200,000 for Scott County, and then we have another round of applications that are due February 12th. So if you know of a business that is actually suffering and needs some funding, please ask them to apply. Work with Frank at Little Wisco. They can call our office. We'll be glad to help all we can. And we continue to, uh, you know, update websites, things like that. We've had two prospect visits, and we continue to follow up with existing leads. So we've been really busy with uh, the prospects and businesses, and uh, we appreciate all y'all do to help us. And thank you very much. Any questions? One quick question, John. I don't know if you that or not, but uh, it's $15 minimum wage. I talked to a couple of business owners. They said it's going to kill them. They had to do that, and uh, a lot of some are in the restaurant business, and uh, so when that happens, and the prices, you know, are going to go up substantially. Said, you know, what they have, so what's going to do for the retail business? I don't know. Uh, here in the county, I mean, it's going to do the same thing here. Uh, if, if it goes to that, you know, it's a it's a, it's a big amount. That's a large jump from what it is. That uh, even if you think about that, uh, restaurants. Some of the restaurants are around the nine ten dollar an hour range. If you go up to fifteen, that's a, a major cost on the bottom line. And uh, I don't know if you noticed or not, but pals have already increased their prices on their food because they just went ahead and done the increase of the fifteen dollars. It's going to affect the uh, people that go in there that wants to get food. So those, all those people that go through the drive-through, so that's who it affects, because prices go up, just because they pay more, the prices go up on everybody. Everybody has to pay. Yeah. Uh, I'm on the board of Clio board, and uh, one of the last a couple meetings ago, uh, the starting wage at McDonald's in Fairfax County is $19 an hour. That's at McDonald's. So we're not Northern Virginia. I mean, the 15 bucks an hour here, I, I like more money, but it's going to kill our small business. Yeah. So, you know, you think about that. That's the, and what drives that $19 an hour is the economics of it. So economics will cause you to give pay raises and, and they can afford to do that. But to force that on these people, uh, one guy has 19 employees. He said, I don't know. He said, I can survive, but I got to raise the prices like what you said pals have done. So, it, I mean, really, there's no gain. Uh, the people on a fixed income, they're going to suffer the most. Their income is not going to go up. And some of you on this board, our income is set, and you can't, you know, you don't get an increase. But I'm glad for the people making minimum wage that they can get more money, but what's it going to do to our businesses in the long term? You know, it's, I mean, I know you're involved in a lot of this, and I know probably your thoughts on it, but it's not a, it's not a good economic driver for Southwest Virginia to force that. And one thing that's going through the house now as an impact on rural farmers is that uh, they uh, have a bill, $15 uh, a wage rate for a farm worker. That will impact our farmers as well, cause their price to go up and then food prices to the restaurants to go up and then there's another hit on everybody. I'm nothing on fish. I heard through the grapevine one of our local farmers said this is his last year of doing what he's been doing. 
Yeah, we, we can't stand for another farmer to go out in business. That's how we get our food. We I don't know where we're right now, you may know, but Scott County was ranked the fifth largest in the state as far as farming. Uh, where we are now. It'll be interesting to see now. Yeah, we used to be fifth in the state. It'd be good to have uh, ask that of Scott Jural Extension Office. I'm sure he knows that. But yeah, at one time we were. So if that is their intent to force uh, you know people like that out of business, I mean, it's a it's a the consequences of a bad decision the way I see it, and that's what is happening with uh, with this. And so I just I don't know. It's just it's not uh, it's not a good thing. Anything uh, else? Yes. Yeah. John, uh, on Riverside Development, where the county owns those bays down there at the old Robert's Tarmory Cave, uh, I've heard that they're wanting to buy them. Is there any, uh, you know anything about that? We, we're actually, at, we have to go through an appraisal process. So we've advertised for appraisal. We didn't get any um, uh, proposals the first time. We've got it re-advertised. So once we get proposals that we can, uh, work through that, and that's what we got to do. But yeah, there they, there there's some interest in that, but we've got to get it appraised first. Well, uh, there's really no reason the county should keep them, I guess, is it? No, I mean, if we sell them, they'll go back on the tax base yeah, and we'll start be, collecting be taxes. On, they'll be on the tax roll, right? Yeah. But we still got to go through the process <clears throat> and get it appraised. Yeah. Yeah. And. Uh, <coughs> any good prospects on getting another business at uh, Riverside Development? Yeah, well, one of those that I mentioned is is one for the for that property as well. One the one of the new prospects, two prospects. I mean, we we've, we've had that property for 12, 14 years, right. and we need to get something down there to help with the tax base if we can. Yeah, we need some additional. That's yeah. correct. Yes. What about the? Uh, call center up there, is that going to affect, what's that going to do if they don't come back and pay the rent? Well, we'll just have to work with VC to if they don't, you know, but right now they're transitioning, they're working from home, you know, they cannot work. If you if you go in that facility or if you remember announcing that, how close they're working in there, they're they're really a, closer than you and Marshall working in there so they they've got to be able to social distance so they're they transition to home so they are working from home and uh, I don't know if they don't do not go back in there in the future then we'll have to work with VC to to uh, market the facility since they have a loan on that and get somebody else in there well they're making rent payments through June is that correct yes yeah. yes through yes. June does that mean the county has to pick up those payments after June no, we're just working with BC to, to get somebody else in there. We'll just put, do a pause and then work with them to get somebody else in there. John, just maybe out there and I, I missed it, but where's the medical records business going to be located when they get into it? More than likely that's going to be in the Creek Road Tech Center, but we're still working out the details on that. They are training in there now, so they, they like the space. They are training, and uh, they're spread out in a room twice the size of this right here. So they really like that. So they can spread out and do the training. The building that Darrell was talking about down in Weber City, is, is that on the road or is it the one behind the business up on the hill? That's one on the hill. Yeah, I agree with Darrell. We, yeah. If we can get, if we can sell it, you know, go through the process. I think well, no, that one's on the road. The one he's that one's about. on the road. Yeah, the T-Tex on the hill. I oh, no, I was talking about that. Yeah, it's on the road. Okay. It's right next to the road. Do we own the building behind, up on the hill there? We own the building behind too. Yes. Are they interested in that? Uh, both of those are on the same plan. Yeah, they're on the same plan. So it's plan. two buildings. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments or questions for Mr. Gilbert? We do need to go in close session with him with two minutes on pers perspective industry. Is that correct? Yes. So we'll do that in a couple of minutes when he gets through. We do need to go in close session on that. Uh, so anything else for him in open session? Appreciate it, John. Thank you. Just hang around. We'll go in a few minutes. All right. Uh, item 16. Looking for a quick to that. Comments, requests, recommendations. Mr. Jim, start with you. I'm good. Mr. Tipton. Just thank all of the staff and uh, for what you're doing to help us look good and, and, uh, and for helping our county. I think it's 
really important. Thank you, you Bill, for getting gravel out to our solid waste centers. And of course, that's always a work in progress. And you know, we had some rain since then, and we still have some more potholes there. And so we appreciate what you're doing. Thank you, sir. Mr. Brick. Appreciate our staff. That's about all I've got. I didn't mean to miss you, you but <laughs> I checked you off too quick. I'm coming back to you. Go ahead. No, no that, that's all I've got. I've been before for Mr. Harris. <laughs> uh, yeah, I appreciate what everybody's doing. Uh, uh, I'd like to say again what I talked about last meeting, our, our uh, regular January meeting about our roads. You know, I think we made the right decision about the just not not supporting what they were wanting to do but uh, you know, I've been thinking about our roads you know those those roads got that way because they decided not to <coughs> up. you know that's that somewhere in time they decided not to uh, not to work those roads and we really need to pay attention to our existing roads uh, and not let that happen further you know it, uh, there, there, there needs to be some sort of a I know there's a six-year plan about getting them paved. Everybody wants a road paved. That's all grand. But but before those roads are, are able to be paved, they need to be on some sort of a maintenance schedule. You know, where they were beat on. And I know it costs money. I know it's expensive. But they need to be on some sort of schedule where they go in there, put gravel on them, clean the ditches out, do whatever they can do to help maintain those roads. And I'm not talking about an every year thing. Maybe every other year, just go in there and work on them. Uh, but you know it. And I know the weather, you know, we got to understand too, this is one of the wettest seasons we've had and all this, this little bit of snow and then it rains and it freezes and then it rains again and it snows again. And, you know, the, all our roads are a mess, but, but we, need to, we need to try our best to find some sort of solution where they go in on these roads ever so often and just, main, just do a good maintenance on those roads. But, uh, but anyway, uh, appreciate what everybody's doing. Looking forward to this year. <coughs> Hopefully it'll be better than last. Thanks, sir. Miss Hood. I agree with you on the roads. I uh, get a lot of calls about gravel roads. Uh, but I am very happy about black gum. <laughs> and some of the residents have contacted me um, this week in celebration and they wanted me to say thank you to everybody on the board. They're very appreciative of us and everything we did. And I appreciate what everybody's done, Lena Wisco and everybody that's been involved in this process. That's all I have. All right, Ms. Uh, I'm going to echo what you said about the black gum. I'm very excited for those folks. Um, I know that's been a long process for them. It's been over a year, a couple of months now, I guess, since they've had water. So I'm, I'm very excited to see that coming to fruition. And I do want to mention that there's a produce stand down in Duffield. If anybody doesn't know that now, there's a produce stand. Good. Uh, I was asked to mention that, so I wanted to do that. Um, I appreciate all of the staff and uh, you know it was an honor to work on that CARES Act committee it is that was to see that this morning that was great that uh, to see that we're able to help the departments and things you know here in the county and keep that money local to put that back out to to the people that are on that front line working for us and um, I'm very appreciative of what our first responders and and what they do, and I'm very proud that we were able to do what we did for them. So it was an honor to work on that committee. Good. It was a lot of work, and we met a lot, but it was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. Spending a lot of money, but it was for a very, very good cause. So I'm very thankful to work with the people that are on that too. So thank you, ma'am. Thank you. And I was going to echo what uh, Miss Hood said about the Black Gum Water Project, and and. Mr. Brick and uh, Mr. Tip and myself serve on Lena Wisco. And I heard last week it was going to come out. It's hard to sell on good news. You know, when we hear about jobs coming, you got to sell on it. You can't say anything. But anyway, it was, it was uh, we had set on it, waited, and then they announced it there Monday that, that, uh, that the last part of it was getting that grant from DHCD. 313000 it came through, and that was the, uh, that's what they needed to make it happen. So uh, probably the most appreciative people I've talked to when I, I talked to them after a Lenovisco meeting Monday night and 
and they're just, uh, well, they haven't had water since Thanksgiving 2019. Yeah. And so you think about that being without water for a little while, but they have uh, improvised, they've done a lot to, to make it uh, their lives as good as they could with what they had. The, the fire departments, you know, they've done well getting some stuff done, and uh, Mr. Dixon has been up there at their houses visiting with them and talking to them, so this is going to be good. Hopefully we'll have a groundbreaking type thing sometime in the middle of the spring, that's what, what you're hoping for. And so when we do that, when that happens, I think it's a good thing to, to do. And, and uh, but those people are going to get water. So, and, and Little Wisco, they put money into it too. As money come from that, and it's from the Coalfield Water Development Fund, money came from that, and then the DHCD money. So it all came together, and those people are going to get water. So, anyway, this board here, the big part you all played in it, is all very important. And uh, so, anyway, it, it made it happen. And again, thanks to you folks for making all this uh, happen, make this look pretty good up here, what you do. And the one thing I wanted to say, I meant to call Mike Dishman when the auditor said what he did about our clean audit for, uh, that ended uh, June 30th, and I meant to call him. And the comments he had for the PSA, how good it was managed, how their, their, uh, their financial side of it, he was, he was, and that usually don't happen for him to sing about somebody and praise them for what they've done. So anyway, I will call Mr. Dish to meant to it already. said we're going to the did and thank them for what they were managed anyway they have. We've had a little differences with them, but anyway, when something good happens, I'll recognize that too. So that's just part of what we should do. Anything else before we go into closed session? All right, and uh, it's, let me read this. Let me, I need a motion to go. We have two items actually to go into closed session, and uh, we need a motion to go into closed session. So moved. All right, Mr. Jeter made a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Mr. Heron, second. So uh, this board hereby enters into closed session uh, pursuant to Virginia Code Section 2.2-3711 being A1 personnel and uh, to do 8.5 uh, prospective industry. All in favor of what we're saying, aye. Uh, aye. Opposed. So we're going to closed session and uh, we'll go.